Hi Year 11, I hope you're all okay. We wanted to put together a video for Humanities post-16 courses to show you the different things you'll be doing next year if you choose one of the courses in Humanities. I'm going to be talking to you about Social Anthropology. Now Social Anthropology studies human behaviour across the world by looking at different case studies. We focus our learning on six main questions. Those main questions are as follows. What is culture? What does it mean to be a person? What does it mean to live in society? How are we the same and yet different from each other? Why does anthropology matter? To what extent is it possible to know others? So let's say, for example, we were looking at the question, how are we the same and yet different? Lots of people around the world get married, but it differs depending on what country or what diff different culture you'll look at. Now, the way that I got married is very different to the way that other people in this country get married and around the world and how they get married. And we look at different ways in which something that is very similar that we all do as humans can be seen so differently around the world. Now, the first thing we focus on in social anthropology is the body. We look at how the body has, perce has been perceived around the world throughout the past and how that's changed, how beauty is different no matter what country you go to. Now social anthropology is a very good subject if you really like thinking about human behaviour but like, like I said we do focus on those six main questions. Hi my name's Miss Lee Roberts and I teach the psychology here at Dover Christ Church. Um, if you take IB psychology, you can expect to learn all about the brain, the mind, and how we behave as humans, and also how animals behave. Um, there are some brilliant career paths you can achieve in, when you study the psychology. Um, some of those career paths might include teaching, becoming a police officer, forensic investigator, um, social worker. There are just so many careers that would benefit from an education in psychology. The topics that we study are sociocultural psychology, we study cognitive psychology, biological psychology, and we also um, study some options in the second year. Those options are abnormal psychology, which is looking specifically at mental health disorders, and we also study human relationships. If you'd like any more information, please feel free to email me. You can find out more about what we do at our In Thinking website that we subscribe to as a school. This will act as your online textbook and have all the information that you could ever want or need about IB psychology. Hi Year 11, my name is Mrs Tillotson. You won't recognise me. I started working at the Academy after the Easter holidays, so once the lockdown had started. But I'm here today to talk to you about environmental systems and societies, which is a subject that you can study in the sixth form. Environmental systems and societies brings together the physical and human processes that we've learned in geography at GCSE and looks at them from a slightly different angle and kind of blends them together a bit more. So in this course, you will study these subjects in a way that will help you to make really well-informed choices about lots of environmental and social issues that we're facing today. So things like food availability, where our food comes from, how it's grown and how that affects the local community. We look at things like um, migration, so where people are coming from, where they're going to and how that affects those countries that are involved. During this course, it's not just a class based course. We have 20 hours of practical work, which we do, some of which is in the laboratories and some of which is in the classroom. A lot of it's outside in the school grounds. So we really do a lot more than just sit in class and study from books. It's quite an active, quite a practical course. There are eight topics that we study in environmental systems and societies, and some of them will look familiar to you, either from biology and science or from geography. So the second topic, ecosystems and ecology, is something that you definitely study in biology at GCSE and you also study in geography at GCSE. And the same with biodiversity and conservation, 
which you also study in both bi biology and geography, and also um, human systems, which is about population and population movement. You've studied that at geography too at GCSE. So lots of these topics are familiar to you, which is um, a really good way of being able to feel quite confident and quite comfortable in the, t in the subject quite early on. The assessment for this course is divided into two parts. So you have something called the internal assessment, which contributes up to 25% of your total mark. And this is a project that you do um, yourself with the support of a teacher, and it takes you 10 hours to complete this topic or this project. The, what's called the external assessment are the exam parts of this course, and there are two exams. One is for one hour, and the other one is for two hours, and they contribute up to 75% of the course. A little bit more information about the internal assessment. This is really an opportunity for you to carry out an investigation into any of the topic areas in environmental systems and societies that interest you. So you can choose something about food, something about climate, something about population. It really doesn't matter whichever topic area you want to select. And it's your chance to carry out some research, so some field work, some data collection, maybe some lab work. And then to look at your data and look at the results that you have and to write up your project yourself with the help of a teacher or the support of a teacher. And you're assessed on that as 25% of your final grade. One of the really nice things about environmental systems and societies is that it's what's called an interdisciplinary course. So this means that it's both considered to be a science based subject and an arts based subject as well. This is really useful if you're applying for an apprenticeship or a university place or a job at the end of your sixth form time, because without having to study biology, chemistry or physics, you're still considered to have studied a science at sixth form level. So the course, not surprisingly then, has some sciencey parts to it. We do some maths, there's some graph creation, we look at data and we do calculations. Um, but there's also more of an art side to it, like in English or in history, where you'd write an essay or have a discussion and give your opinion about an idea or about a theory. So there's a nice mix of science and art there. And as I say, it really helps you when you're uh, finishing sixth form and you're looking to move on from school. It just gives you a little bit of an edge on people who've only studied sciences or only studied arts. And there aren't very many subjects that do that. So, as I said previously, you'll recognise some of these topics and ideas from GCSE and at this level in ESS, we study these in more detail, but a lot of them will be familiar to you and make you feel quite comfortable and confident in the, in the course quite early on. If you're looking at trying to choose subjects that work well together and that complement each other when you're studying them, then this is just a little bit of advice about other subjects that you might choose to, to study alongside environmental systems and societies. So um, particularly good subjects to study are biology, cultural and social, uh, sorry, social and cultural anthropology, maths, applied science, philosophy and ethics, or sociology. So they work, any of those subjects um, with ESS, work very nicely together. And particularly biology and applied science overlap in some topic areas. So um, biodiversity and conservation and ecology and ecosystems, they overlap with biology and they overlap with applied science. So you're studying the same topics just in different subjects, uh, which really helps you to um, support, I suppose, both subjects by knowing a little bit more and having a slightly different angle on those those topics, which is a real benefit. So it just really leads me to say really good luck in making your choices year 11. This is a crazy year to be making choices about sixth form study and, and very hard when you've been away from school for so long. But I just really wish you really good luck. Make sure you leave lots of your options open. And um, if you have any questions at all, then um, please either email me at the email address on the PowerPoint or um, if you want to talk to me or you have a parent who wants to talk to me um, or you both want to talk to me, then uh, call the school office and I'll be really happy to arrange a, a phone call back to uh, answer any of the questions that you have. All right. Take care and good luck. Bye bye. Hello, I'm Miss Harper. Some of you may have seen me from being around the school. I'm going to talk to you about the health and social care subject that we offer in the sixth form. 
Health and social care is a really broad subject area that pulls together many different disciplines to help understand people and their needs. It combines many elements of biology, sociology, psychology, nutrition, law and ethics, so it complements a range of other subject areas. If you wanted to pursue a career in health and social care, you would be working in a sector that is dedicated to helping others and improving lives, which is an incredibly rewarding career path. Uh, the Cambridge Technicals are vocational uh, qualifications that not only support progression into higher education, should you decide this path is for you, they will also equip you with the knowledge and skills required for employment and for society as a whole. Some examples of the kinds of careers this qualification can prepare you for include registered nurse, physician assistant, dental hygienist, social worker, paramedic, healthcare assistant, early years practitioner, counsellor or even a teacher. So unit one is building positive relationships and this is essential for work within the health and social care sectors. You'll learn the key factors for different types of relationships and understand what may, inf what may influence how you build them effectively and what barriers you and others may face. The second unit is equality and diversity. Good health and social care practice recognises and accommodates the diversity in British society. This unit is essential for preparation for your work experience. It is also a very useful unit for those particularly interested in social work or early help. The third unit is health, safety and security. This unit focuses on the legislation in place to support those who are working within the health and social care sector. This is this through learning um, to conduct risk assessments and to identify hazards. Fourth unit is anatomy and physiology and you will learn the basic structure and functions of the body systems that keep us alive every day and how to keep these systems healthy. This includes understanding the parts played by the organs and how they could possibly malfunction. And the last unit is infection control. As I'm sure we are aware more than ever in 2020 infections and diseases can kill which is why hospitals and other care uh, settings take precautions called infection control. You will learn the methods used to prevent the, the spread of infection. If you have any further questions about health and social care, please come and find me or send me an email. Hi again, year 11. I know all of you will be jumping at the chance to do history at IB. Now we run a higher level course at Dover Christchurch Academy. We focus our first topic on rights and protest. So we look at apartheid and we look at Nelson Mandela, who you all know that I love. We look at civil rights in America as part of the same topic. So all are talking about rights and protest. We also look at the Cold War, which I've just done a video on, which is on the YouTube channel. So please give it a watch. So you're looking at the Cold War between America and Soviet Union and how that caused tension. We also look at authoritarian states. So we look at Hitler and we also look at Castro in Cuba. And we look at the Second World War and the Americas. You also have to do an internal assessment, which can be any historical period of your choice. So if there's something that you really, really want to focus on, you get to research that yourself. You go to the, the University of Kent or Christchurch University, you get to research that and you have to write a historical essay on that topic. And like I say, that could be anything that you want. I really hope to see you next year to do history. And if you have any questions, then please let me know. You all know my email address. Hope you're staying well and staying safe. Bye. Hi, I'm Mr. Waghorn, the new head of humanities, and I'll be teaching the IB history course alongside Mrs. Birch. Uh, my specialities in history are 20th century dictators and the civil rights movement. And so I'm very lucky in the fact that I'm teaching authoritarian states and the civil rights movement. Look forward to seeing you all in September.